what's up, hello, my name is Emma, and today I'm going to be sharing with you guys my June book haul. In the month of June, I really did not buy that many books in the beginning of the month. Like, I was getting near the end of the month, and I was like, wow, I'm gonna have a tiny haul. And as most months that go like this, I just went crazy at the end of the month, and I bought so many books, but nonetheless, I'm really, really excited. I feel like I have a nice variety of different books here, of different genres and whatnot. I think it's gonna be a really fun time. The first book on my June haul is Willa of the Wood by Robert Beattie. This video does contain a paid promotion with Disney Book Group as Willa of the Wood comes out today on July 10th. This is the first installment in a new middle grade fantasy series and it follows a sprite named Willa who is a thief by night in order to please the king of her people. When Willa is left stranded, she calls upon this ancient bond to free her, but she finds out along the way that the day folk whom she has been stealing from are not what she has expected and the magical foundations of her people are under attack. Now, I am not typically a middle grade reader, but last month I read a really phenomenal middle grade book and I have another one later in this haul and I've just been really in a middle grade mood lately. I feel like for so long I viewed it as something that's so different from YA, but I've realized it's really not all that different and there are some really wonderful middle grade series out there. Speaking of middle grade series, Willa of the Wood is actually set in the same world as the Serafina series, if you have heard of it. It's another one that's been on my TBR, so I'm definitely interested in diving into this one. I haven't read a middle grade fantasy in quite a while, so I'm interested to see what I think of this one. Now, in the month of June, I went to a book signing with Marisha Pessel, who is the author of Never World Wake. I actually had the amazing opportunity to interview her at the event, so if you would like to check out my interview with her, I will leave it linked below. But as I had to buy a book to gain entry to the event, and I did already have all of Marisha's books that I wanted to get signed, I decided to pick up two books. One is very, very in my comfort zone, and the other one is completely out of the ordinary of anything I've ever read but the first is if you don't have anything nice to say by Layla Sales. You may have heard me talk about Layla Sales before. She is the author of This Song Will Save Your Life which is one of my all-time favorite books but yet I have not read anything from her since. I feel the premise of if you don't have anything nice to say is really relevant to our social climate today. It follows a girl named Winter whose life is turned upside down when she is caught saying the wrong thing online. Her friends have abandoned her. Her future plans are cut short she's receiving hate mail and death threats all because of this one ignorant comment she made. So it is all about Winter trying to show the world she made a mistake, she's learned and changed, but it also challenges the idea of if the response she received is really deserved. Call out culture and public shaming are really hot topics right now and there are just so many different sides to it. I have been on both sides of Winter's situation, so I'm very intrigued to see what I think of this one. I really think it will challenge me to think outside of my own perspectives and I think it's a, a very controversial book, but I'm excited to see what I think of it. And so the next book I got at that signing was recommended to me actually by another booktuber whose name is Matthew Skirapa, and he recommended Kitchen by Banana Yoshimoto. Matthew was actually working the day of that particular signing I went to, and so he just saunters up next to me and is like, you don't necessarily have to get this one, but I would really recommend it. And there are just some times when somebody starts talking about a book they're really passionate about, and even if it is so out of the ordinary of what you would normally read, you're immensely intrigued by it just because of that person's passion. So Kitchen takes place in Japan and it follows a girl named Mikaj who was orphaned and brought up by her grandmother who has recently passed. And honestly, I don't really know much about this book other than the fact that Mikaj becomes really infatuated with her grandmother's kitchen and it is a way for her to deal with the loss of her grandmother and the other situations that she is dealing with in her life. This is actually a book that was translated from Japanese and I have never read a translated book. So when I got this recommendation from Matthew who reads a lot of translated books, I was like, you know what, maybe I should really give something new a try. And it sounds like a very unique book. I absolutely have not read anything like this but because it is small and it deals with family dynamics which is a component of literature I really love I'm very very excited to see what I think of this one so in the month of June I actually started teaching myself French again through Duolingo I studied French for five years in high school and I loved it so so much and I was really missing it so it's really nice to be back in my French mode along with that this month I went to the Strand and every time I go to the Strand I check their international YA section because you know I love collecting foreign editions of my favorite books so I I got two new versions of Harry Potter, Harry Potter et le Prince de Sangmelay and Harry Potter et les Reliques de la Mort. 
I have actually read Sorcerer's Stone in French before. It was a really cool experience and I do actually have a full set of Harry Potter in French that I hope to complete in my lifetime. But I saw these two big ass out of print paperbacks in French and this is actually the edition of Sorcerer's Stone that I read. I believe this might be one of the very first publications of Harry Potter in French and they were both seven dollars each and I was like I have to have these. I need them in my life. I don't feel bad about it whatsoever. They were so inexpensive. These are actual books I plan to read in the future in a foreign language and it's just really nostalgic having them. Having Harry Potter and my love for French combined, it's just like the best thing ever. So I'm very, very excited to add these to my Harry Potter collection. So next on this book haul, I have a tiny little unboxing! This book haul is also being kindly sponsored by HMH Teen who sent me this exciting box inspired by the Grim Lovelies which is an upcoming fantasy release and so we are going to just dive in and see what goodies are in here. So when I open the box there is this little quote that says in the heart of Paris you will find royals hoarding influences over humans, witches who spill pretty blood for magic, goblins fashionable tricksters with a taste for vengeance, and beasties the most powerful of them all they just don't know it yet so first we have this little card with the Eiffel Tower in it with a letter from someone named the Diamond Witch next we have a set of enamel pins that say Grim Lovelies steal the spell keep the magic beat the clock and the four different types of pins are witches beasties royals and goblins I don't know what it is but when it comes to fantasy I love when different like creatures or types of magic users have these different little names like the mortal instruments children of blood and bone the Grisha trilogy I just always find it exciting because you get to figure out for yourself like which group would you be a part of so I think these pins are really really cute so this is a grim lovelies lip gloss and when you open it it has the lip gloss and a little mirror and so the final item in this little unboxing is the one I am the most excited for and that is grim lovelies by Megan Shepard which comes out on October 2nd I have had my eye on Grim Lovelies for a while as it has been compared to the Mortal Instruments and any fantasy series that mildly sounds like the Mortal Instruments I'm intrigued by. Especially reading that little card with the different descriptions of the witches, goblins, beasties, and all of that. It really sounds like a very atmospheric urban fantasy novel and it also obviously has something to do with Paris. Our main character's name is Anouk and she is a girl who has been enchanted from animal to human with her humanity being tied to her mistress's dark magic. Anouk has lived her entire life as Madame Vitrova's servant but things change when Madame Vitrova is murdered and the rest of the beasties only have three days before the spells feed and they return to their animal forms forever. In a desperate attempt to save their humanity, Anouk and the rest of the beasties travel into Paris for the very first time and discover that the magic they have been living with their entire lives are way more powerful than they ever expected. It says on the back this book is perfect for fans of Marissa Meyer, Holly Black, and Cassandra Clare, literally three of my all-time favorite science fiction fantasy authors and the plot of it just sounds like a book I would absolutely love. I feel myself slowly creeping back into a fantasy mood. I don't know what it is about summer but it really makes me want to read urban fantasy again so I can promise you I will be reading Grim Lovely soon and I just expect that I will absolutely love it. The next book on this haul was sent to me by Simon & Schuster so thank you so much to Simon & Schuster for sending me a copy of People Kill People by Ellen Hopkins. Ellen Hopkins newest release comes out September 4th and it is apparently about gun violence. The back cover says people kill people, guns just make it easier. A gun is sold in the classifieds, bought by a teenager for protection. One week it will bring six teens in Tuscan, Arizona into close contact in a town wrought with political and personal tensions. Someone will shoot and someone will die. I surprisingly have never read an Ellen Hopkins book. I know so many people that really really love Ellen Hopkins books and constantly recommend them but for some reason I have just never reached for one but definitely gun violence is an issue I feel really really passionately about and so I can definitely see this being a book I will be completely consumed by. I expect nothing but greatness from what I have heard of Ellen Hopkins already published works and I think that this is going to be a very very topical new release. So with me buying some foreign editions of Harry Potter this month I also took to Book Depository and ordered some very exciting UK editions of some books that I love. The first is They Both Die at the End by Adam Silvera. This is the gorgeous UK edition 
and They Both Die at the End is an epic story that takes place a couple of years into the future where scientists have discovered a way to pinpoint the exact day that someone is going to die and therefore have created a company called Deathcast that calls you at midnight and tells you you are going to die in the next 24 hours. So this book follows two boys named Mateo and Rufus who meet on something called the Last Friend app which is for people who are on their death day and only have a numbered amount of hours to live and it is just their story of how they live a lifetime in a day. I read They Will Die at the End last year I believe and it was just amazing. It is heartbreaking and powerful and inspiring and just really really amazing. If you have not picked up They Will Die at the End you are totally in for a treat. And the next UK cover I bought is one I cannot stop talking about and that is Renegades by Marissa Meyer. I did not even know this gorgeous UK cover existed until Haley from Haley and Bookland talked about it and so like I knew I needed it because y'all know Renegades is my favorite book of the year. UK paperbacks are just so cool to me. They always have this like really simplistic yet intriguing cover design and they're just always so awesome. I can't stop collecting them. I'm sure many of you have heard me talk about Renegades before but it basically takes place in this world where people with superpowers are divided among two different groups. There are the Renegades who are basically like the policemen of this world and they attempt to stop crime and then we have the anarchists who are tired of people with powers being oppressed. They are tired of the Renegades not doing anything so they are intent on bringing this world back into a state of anarchy. So Renegades follows a boy named Adrian who is actually the son of the heads of the Renegades and it also follows an anarchist named Nova who enters the Renegades as a new recruit and she attempts to bring the Renegades down from within. I could talk about Renegades for forever. There are very few books that have completely consumed me just from the first installment in a series and I am just dying for the rest of the books. So I cannot wait for Arch Enemies to come out later this year but for now I have this gorgeous UK edition to sort of satisfy my Renegade needs until then. The next book on this haul was kindly sent to me by Epic Reads so thank you so much to Epic Reads for sending me a copy of All of This Is True by Ligia de Penaflor. All of This Is True has definitely been getting some hype recently and I feel like it's because the premise of this book is just so shocking and unique. So this book follows a group of teens that begin to hang out with a fairly famous author and find out that they got more than they bargained for. Our first main character's name is Miri who is a huge fan of the author Fatima Mo and drags the rest of her friends to a signing in the hopes of growing closer to her. Our next main character's name is Solil who is also an aspiring writer and just cannot believe her luck when her and her friends begin hanging out with this super famous this author that might lead to some connections for her in the future. And our final main character's name is Penny who decided to share all of the secrets she knows with the author Fatima Mo in the hopes of shedding her label of being a materialistic girl at school. And so after these teens have befriended this new author and they feel like they are living the dream, it turns out that the author has used them as characters and storylines in her newest book. It's just so funny and ridiculous to me but also so unbelievable and I love it. So it is basically all about the consequences that these teens face as their secrets are being spread out to the world. It's about the lines between fiction and fact and I'm just really excited to read this one. I think it is going to be a thrilling, thrilling tale. And now we are delving into the territory of books I bought very impulsively at the end of this month and my downfall was really discovering the fact that you can get free one day shipping from Amazon Prime if you spend $35 on selected merchandise. I did not need these books the next day but it was a really tempting offer and like Amazon you really got me. The first book is yet another copy of City of Bones by Cassandra Clare. This is number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, oh god 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Oh number 22. Oh my god. So this is the new mass market paperback edition of City of Bones. I believe it just came out last month and I just I had to have it. Honestly at this point I don't even contemplate before buying a Cassandra Clare book. I just want to support her with everything I have and to me that sometimes means buying all of her books no matter how many editions I have. So I'm really excited to add this one to my collection. The next book I bought was actually a 
indirectly recommended to me by She Might Be Monica. I saw this book on her bookshelf and it was just like so interesting that I thought I had to have my own copy and that is Meddling Kids by Edgar Cantero and it is apparently like a Scooby-Doo YA novel. So in 1977 this group of four teenagers and their dog ended up solving one of the greatest mysteries of their town which turns out to be a bitter old man in a mask. Now it is 1990 and things have definitely changed from the group. They have been running from their own personal demons as well as dealing with the death of one of their former members. And to top that all off, the man they apprehended many years ago is up for parole and they find out that they took in the wrong guy. So the gang gets back together to travel to their hometown and find out what really happened in 1977. This book just sounds like a really whimsical and fun horror thriller and I'm very, very interested in it. I feel like it will be like the perfect spooky fall read and I definitely think I'm going to really enjoy this one. The next book I bought is Ivy Aberdeen's Letter to the World by Ashley Herring Blake. I bought this because I just finished Ashley Herring Blake's second YA novel Girl Made of Stars last month and I loved it so much that I knew I had to delve into her middle grade works. This is her first middle grade novel and I believe she's coming out with a second but Ivy Aberdeen's Letter to the World follows a young girl named Ivy whose family of six is displaced when a tornado destroys their home. In the storm, Ivy had lost a journal full of drawings of girls holding hands as she is interested in girls and mysteriously when she's back at school, some of the drawings begin to appear in her locker and she thinks it might be the girl she has a crush on. It just sounds like a really cute and fluffy middle grade novel. I am like a huge, huge fan of Ashley Herring Blake. Both of her, the YA books I've read from her have absolutely blown me away and this book was also highly recommended by Kaylee Hyde whose recommendations on books featuring characters from the LGBTQ plus community I really really trust so I am very very excited to read it. The next book in this haul was also sent to me by Disney Hyperion and it is a manuscript of The Darkest Legacy by Alexandra Rackin which is the new book in the Darkest Minds series that is coming out later this year. Now The Darkest Minds was one of the first YA series I ever read and to this day it is still one of my faves. It is a really really amazing dystopian series about kids with superheroes and oppressive governments and it is just absolutely epic. The movie is coming out later this year and we are also getting this exciting new book in the series on July 31st. Because this is a sequel I will not spoil too much for you guys who haven't read The Darkest Minds but if you are a fan and don't know much about The Darkest Legacy I will say it follows one of my favorite characters from the series named Zoo. It takes place five years after the end of The Darkest Minds or the third book in The Darkest Minds and Zoo is forced to go on the run again after she has been accused of a crime she didn't commit. I am so, so excited for book four in the Darkest Mind series. We've been getting a lot of like additional installments in classic YA series this year. And so I'm very, very excited for the Darkest Legacy. I know I'm going to love it. And I'm so, so happy I have another chance to dive back into this world. The next book that I bought in the month of June is Final Draft by Riley Redgate. I read... I believe it might have been Riley Redgate's first book last year called Seven Ways We Lie and I really really loved it. I also have her second novel Noteworthy which I haven't read yet but Final Draft recently came out and I've been very excited to read it. Our main character's name is Layla and she is a very passionate aspiring writer. Her creative writing teacher says that she has a lot of talent but that doesn't really matter when a Pulitzer Prize winning author tells her she has nothing special in her writing. So in order to gain the approval of this author, Layla sets out on some personal adventures that leave her in many situations she would not have been in before. It really forces her to take risks for the first time and leave the comfort of the world that she has created and it sounds like a really amazing novel. I've also heard that Layla is a pansexual Latinx teen which I am really really excited for. Y'all know I love my diverse contemporary novels and I was very happy with Riley Redgate's first novel so I'm sure I will love what is maybe her third. I don't really know how many books she's written but nonetheless I'm super super hyped for this book. The final book that I bought in the month of June is You by Caroline Kepnes. 
You is a book that has been on my radar for a very, very long time. I've heard that this book is very polarizing. You either love it or hate it, and I don't know where I'm going to fall on this one. You is written from the perspective of a man who works in a bookstore and one day finds this beautiful aspiring writer who stumbles into his shop and he begins stalking her online. So it is all about the disturbing and dangerous lengths this man will go through in order to drive this woman into his arms, and it sounds so creepy. But on top of the unsettling plot of this novel, it is also told in second person, which I think is a really unique and almost perfect storytelling format for this particular novel. And so I'm very, very intrigued to read it. I do really really love like gritty and disturbing and jarring thrillers so I'm not entirely sure about you yet but I think I will have some very interesting thoughts on it. And so the final book on this haul was sent to me by Book of the Month Club so thank you so much to Book of the Month for sending me a copy of The Last Time I Lied by Riley Sager. Riley Sager is the author of Final Girls which was a super hyped up thriller novel I believe last year. I think I read it at the end of last year. I don't think I read it this year but nonetheless I did really enjoy it. It wasn't like my favorite thriller in the entire world but it was good enough for me to be very excited for his second release. The Last Time I Lied follows a woman named Emma who as a young girl at summer camp watched three of her cabin mates escape into the darkness of night and never came back. As an adult Emma is a painter and she is given the wild opportunity to return back to her summer camp as a child in order to teach art classes there. So while Emma is back at Camp Nightingale for its first opening since the disappearances of her youth. She ends up finding clues that may point to some explanations as to what happened that fateful night when she was a camper back here and how things start to connect to her reality as an adult. I'm very excited for the last time I lied. I'm very hopeful that the improvements I wanted to be made from Final Girls will be made in the last time I lied, and I think it'll be just a very interesting, creepy, twisted thriller that I'm very excited to read. So that really concludes my book haul for the month of June. I got some amazing, amazing books this month that I cannot wait to dive into. In the comments below, let me know your favorite book that you bought or received or read in the month of June. I would love to know. But that is it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you soon for a new video. Bye!